Hey guys, so my buddy Steve Lukacic is up uh, to run a mushrooming workshop and this video is the story of our foraging and fishing and we're gonna make some Cajun black and catfish tacos. This is a cook and catch video because Stevie Funfur is up, Tara's here, we're cooking and then we're gonna go out fishing. So, little flip-flop. Two famous dogs in one video, whoa, June. Whoa, Scouty! Yeah? Okay, hands. Saying, I need to dry my hands. Whoa, what are you saying? What is this? This is. Caprezi. Caprezi? Caprezi! What's Look at Steve this. Said. Steve shows up as my guest and then brings all kinds of delicious garden treats. Look at this one. I brought you a pound and a half for it, bro. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that one. that's a big tomato. Mm -hmm. There's lots of them in there. This is all homegrown. Okay. Straight out of the garden, not the, not the stevia that he put in there. Yeah, yeah everything I, else is I from my garden. There, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at this. The stevia. We got ground cherries. Ground cherries. So stevia said just More like tomatoes. that. Tomatoes. Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Well, oh. here's what I want to do. Oh, little olive oil. I want to soak some of this oil into the cheese. Mm. So this takes a minute because there's we've got a huge platter here. So I'm just gonna let everybody get a little kiss of nice virgin olive oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right on there. Just drizzle everybody and then the point of this cheese like i was just saying the bocconcini it doesn't taste like anything it's to soak up the other flavors and hold them there on the tomato is the function of this cheese it's not for the flavor because bocconcini tastes like nothing so this is going to change the way that we make this salad at the cottage because it's basically a big bowl with tomato like just willy-nilly well that's okay you can do it in a bowl like as long as the the, the bocconcini is soaking up all the other things, which I guess it would not a bowl, wouldn't it? Eventually, I guess, but like not every tomato hut. This is a better way. Anyway, like it's, I don't think there's rules to it, but how I do it is however big the tomato is, that's how much basil it gets. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, like I want basil. All right. I want so much basil on this thing that it, it like, I'm, dr I'm yeah. tasting it the next day. Oh, everyone likes basil. <laughs> what is that I thing again? A caprese? Caprese. A caprese. C A P R E S E. And to go with the caprese, Look, ooh, a cockle vein. So I took a bottle of Frontenac Gris from Nick's the Vineyard. Flowers, you get flowers, you can just uh, this is one of my own chickens from the family farm. There's some bacon in there. There's some wild mushrooms in there. Uh, ash bolites no, no. and morels. Nice. There's carrots, there's onion, there's tomato paste. Next level. So now we've got homegrown basil on those homegrown tomatoes and bocconcini, right? We've got the olive oil soaking into that cheese. And now we're talking some very nice, you know, it's not, it's not super expensive or anything, but just a nice organic balsamic vinegar. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'll start okay. this part here. So oh, you want to save a little bit. Jerry can have a shot. And then a little less vinegar than oil, I find. You spread the seed. You can do that. Ladies can do that too. Mm -hmm. In their own way. That. A little salt. The salt from a pie, not too much, just a... Yeah, a pie, I just learned that. Like a pie? Any, any, uh... And fresh crack pepper. It's all about the fresh crack, okay? And lots of it, okay? Do not be shy with the fresh crack pepper, because that's what it's all about. This tops the whole thing off. And now it's done. Mofo. One, two, oh, yeah, there's a few three. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. You're so right. Yeah, we are. So pretty. Go ahead, or am I? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Have some. Mm -hmm. I like these little jaune flams. What's the word? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also know that I want this one next. Well, Very good. I better get in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm. Am I right? I've had this for dinner like three nights in a row. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's, okay. it's so good. Mm -hmm. So they're all like compatible. Mm. Yeah, and in my basil. other bed, I put. Nice. Yeah, all the dill and the basil refer to those as uh, aromatic confusers. So good. For pests, right? They mm -hmm. smell it and it wards them off the ones. Yeah. If you want to jam, you know, if you want to pull it out, cut it up. I don't know what you're doing, man. This is your. I don't know what I'm doing either. I never your, made cockle vein before, but uh, yeah, it's my cock. It. Yeah, don't don't mess with my cock, man. <laughs> I don't want to touch your cock, man. <laughs>
<laughs> totally demonetized. <laughs> totally. Yeah, we're having Not a little... Not that there's anything wrong with that. We're having it's a little moment. Thing. Look at that, it's still bubbling. That looks amazing. Bacon, onion, wild mushrooms. Oh my God, it smells amazing, dude. Why don't we put some bacon aside for the, you know, just so we don't lose it in the, in the brine. Cut. Okay, start there. Ooh, look at that. Okay, everybody gets a little bacon for their little chicken. Mm. This, oh yeah, it's nice and tender, dude. Look at that. Yeah, so Nick said <sighs> he did a dirty old rooster in the Cacovay with one of his white wines and he's never had a better chicken. Well, I believe him. This is not a dirty old rooster, but um, it is oh, Nick's Frontenac Gris 2019. Dude, come on. Look at that. We didn't, we didn't need knives. That's what I'm talking about. We didn't need knives, man. I can barely hold it together. I'm trying to get some nice pieces here. What about a couple of wing skis? You want the wing or the hoof? I'll take the wing right there. Okay. <laughs> there's another wing. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Oh, there's morels in here, dude. Is these verpas? Uh, I see a verpa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I said morels, but I think they're verpas. Nice. They might be morels from that big forest fire spot we went to. Oh, they, uh, that could be a black. I don't think so, though. When no, I, I, it's really hard to say verpa. once they're all cooked. I think it's a verpa, yeah. And the other thing that's in there are some of your ash bolites. Oh, nice. Yeah. The little ash tree bolites. I love those things. Well, and if anyone wants white, white meat, what if we I grab do, a big giant brust? Okay, I think that's a good start. Yeah. Okay. I think it's nice. Very nice. Oh, wishbone. What about the carrots? Hold what on, let's get a wishbone on cam. Yeah, we have to oh. dry it out though, right? You have to dry it out before you crack it. Is that or, a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like it just like bends. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll do that after. We'll do it. Well, I thought it would be like the toast to open up the whole deal. It might take forever in this humidity for it to dry out, but that is what you have to well, do. Well, what if we just pull it like <laughs> savages and make oh, it work? Come on. I feel like, do we waste it? We're not gonna okay. waste it. Oh, it does feel just pretty sturdy, right? Just get a good grip. Right? Get a good go, grip. Here we go. Make a wish. One, two, two. three. Ah! Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's, it's you, baby. You got it. Woohoo! You didn't make a wish. <laughs> oh, you... oh man, you didn't even make a wish after all that. <laughs> so much buildup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna use the first one in my bank. You were too caught up in the moment. Yeah, and also you were right. You can do it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Dig in. This looks amazing. It smells so good. I'm gonna grab a slotted spoon to get some of the other stuff out. Please take this out. That was the coveted piece in our house. With yeah. The Okay. No, my house. So your family and my family would get along well. Yeah, they could all share. Yeah. You know, oh, in a one, nice of, way. one of you's got a leg family. One of you's got a breast family. Yeah, yeah we're leg people. My mom. No, my, my, my mom's mom. actually a wing person. Oh, okay. You. She's a wing man, eh? Yeah, a winger. She's the winger. A wing woman. I got a little girl. Oh yeah. Hook up, brother. Up with some veg. Nice. I turned the camera and I missed everybody's first impressions. Yours was. Uh, super tasty, doesn't Ow. need salt, which is a huge compliment. Yeah. And I don't need to add salt and it's super, super tasty. All right. You got enough salt off your bacon. Nice. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. bacon kind of does it, eh? So good. Oh my God. Mm. That's, that's dastardly, man. I, mean, when you I don't think I'll be able to get him flying, but yeah, we thought he was be... a bumblebee, but we suspected he wasn't. And then Are you ready? I'm going to make out... him fly. Oh. Got this oh, chair. Is it behind you? Yeah, there you go. Oh, he almost landed on your camera. That would have been a Oh, he almost landed on my ear. <laughs> well, he's, he's not behind you he now. He's, like, he's kind of buzzing around in a circle behind yeah. you. He's just a faker. He liked the chicken. Yeah, he was right. He might come back still. Look, he's coming. Oh, no, he's on by the door there. Oh, I could get him against the white background, yeah, maybe. That's a great background. He sounds like a bee. Maybe I'll sounds be able like to slow bee. that down. He's a bee yeah, he's a faker. Ah, I gotta go grab the worms, but we're otherwise packed oh, up. Hi. Look at that ancient bag. I love that bag. Your rod, my rod, your other. I even What's have this little rolls. shorty? Yeah, that's my little ultralight. That's to catch bait. Yeah, that's for the bait. Nice right. too. And then I think if you watch my videos on the regular, that's awesome. If you don't, that's okay. But Not this really. was part of my Princess Auto order months ago, and I mostly had Steve in mind. I um I think I said, oh, maybe I could put these outside of my sugar camp or something because they're 12-volt oh, yeah. lights. They're auto lights. Okay. But those lights, those lights probably don't belong in my... Uh, in your sugar shack? Sugar shack 
I bought them because they're 12 volt, but really they belong on your Jeep. So I wanted to give them to you as a Jeep light. That is so very awesome. I'm going to find a mount for them. I don't have anything, but I'm putting a bull bar here uh, soon. No, in that's fact, to where they belong. To protect my grill. Yeah, and man. Yeah. On a, on a bull bar or on, like if you had a roof rack thing, but like. Yeah. Yeah, that too. I'm sure. You know, or on your, um, on your duck boat, which already has some pretty sweet lights. But or it, like. I could use, you know, it would be great. This would be a great nose light. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll have to so. check with the other one. But anyway, th thank you, man. That's yeah. amazing. Thanks for thinking of me, but I'll definitely get a use either. You're going to go on the Jeep or the duck boat. Those are the two places. Yeah. Or like my snowmobile for like my uh, night ice fishing rig. Yeah. Or something. These would be amazing yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah. We'll find a use for them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> We're gonna go catch some catfish. That's the plan. That is the plan. Channel cats, bullheads, and then maybe some evening walleyes. But we gotta hit the road. I just have to grab the worms. We're gassing up and we're out of here. Next time you see us, we're gonna be. Now you're gonna snap in. Oh, on the net. No, when we get there. And we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, this trail, yeah. Perfect. Alright, so I'll let you go. You got a light. Over the guardrails, here we are. We're in the dark, we're catfish fishing. See, All right. if I had a headlamp, I'd be done already. All I'm doing is fucking around trying to... Uh, Steve forgot his headlamp, <laughs> so he's using his car lamp. Yeah, this is right my car lighting. light. Fishing with worms, straight hook. You're doing worm straight hook? I'm gonna tie yeah. up some kind of Texas rig or like a Lindy with this like a sliding sinker oh, okay but i gotta tie it up i don't have i forgot i was doing this and of course i don't i should have just had one ready but <laughs> it'll just take me a minute to tie up something yeah and i'll be all right thinking about putting that bell on but i think i'm just gonna i got some too if you want hang it. on to my rod and just listen for it yeah it's kind of nice when they just hit too yeah so last time we were here um we were casting out way out into the current and we were catching the big ones but then closer to shore here we we're kind of catching the bullheads and the smaller cats which is um maybe preferable to those really big guys so we're gonna try our luck so far no mosquitoes um it's 30 degrees celsius right now it was 40 celsius with the humidex earlier today it was a scorcher and Stevie Funfur, if you've been following his Instagram account, yes. you know that he's all over the mushrooms. And uh, so he came up and he ran a mushroom intro workshop for uh, yeah, it was potential good. foragers in North Bay. It was awesome. Yeah, cool people. Good time. Yep. We're going to do some more in September and October. So come on out. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a local and you want to get into mushrooms. I'm your um, guy. Yep. We got stuff going on. Hopefully right now we got catfish going on. Hey, there's our first one, a little bullhead, so maybe things are going to get started now. Got a very, very small fish on here. It's, uh, I think, almost comically small. Oh, nothing it's, on. It spit it. Oh, I had a very, I was waiting for you to come yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, I just let it dangle. I had a comically small uh, bullhead on there, I think, or something. I don't oh. know. There's number two. That's a nice eater right there. of them there for somebody somebody will come and get those just not us because we've kind of missed the boat on these yeah they'll be back too you know what we did summer we oysters didn't miss, <laughs> you know what we didn't miss the boat on though <laughs> what look over there what what am i saying i think Whoa. you have to move to the left a bit so you... oh am i in the way no yeah, you we'll won't go over now, now look oh, yeah Lord. so so what are you getting ready to do here here we Mushrooms. Uh, chickens will be probably October, November. I like the cool weather. Okay, yeah. Those are like the those oh are like God, we've got a pile of birds bird chickens. Oh, that's nice. They're in really good shape. Yeah, yeah. Right. These are these are oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms. Summer oysters. Yeah. They're the same thing we just found down there, but fresher. Okay. Yeah. So in a better shape. Much better shape. Like, um, gills running down the stipe. They're going in a cluster on dead wood, and they smell like licorice to me. Yeah, yeah. they should smell like licorice and maybe a little seafood. Yeah. Kind of an anise. Smell? Um, I can't smell right now, <laughs> but if I do get right in there, they smell like licorice. 
Yeah, so that one's a no-no. Yeah, these ones are already beat up. Hold on, let's, yeah, let's find some. The ones something. on this side are beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. These, yeah. those are perfect. Yeah, that guy, look at that guy. And if these ones are ready... We didn't look good about the other one. I think there's another clump. The dryer yeah, gills perfect. underneath. Steve didn't like the yellowing. Oh. Like well, they... I'll, I'll eat them like that. They passed my inspection. Yeah. I'd eat that. Yeah, I would I would have eaten that, but Steve's... Um, Put in your basket. You want these? No, we got some. No, these are ones these here. are these are these are nosh, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nah. Toss them. Yeah. I mean, these ones are so good. Yeah. Yeah. So let's have these feel fresh. See, there's a, you feel the difference in the texture, Jer. Feel this? I uh, yeah, I know they're like it's kind of drying now feel out this. and then feel that. Yeah. It's like fresh rubber, kind of like you know. Yeah. yeah. So the patch on the back. There's a little patch on the back that's just beautiful. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't see those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally, when I'm consuming them, I like the smaller ones. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just grab, tell you what. I'll you want to do the harvest there and then we'll uh, why don't we just divide them up after? Divide them all up at the end, yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to do a little bit of mushroom foraging today and we've already got a whole basket full of those uh, yeah, like oyster you know, mushrooms, you know, the summer really oysters. Hooked up uh, kind of fat with another yeah. friend here. So yeah, this is the gentleman that um, he and his son built the plucker. If you watched my 90 chickens in one day video, um, He's the one who built the the plucker. So it's fun to hang out with him. He's uh, pretty big into wild food and gardening and raising poultry and all that kind of stuff. So he and Steve hit it right off, I think. Talking gardening. These ones got fruit flies on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's okay. That's amazing. And there's that particular beetle that you often find in the oysters what as well. Is that guy with eh? the red head? Yeah, the little black beetle with the red head. I, yeah. I think it's I've the only oyster found beetle, in, I swear to yeah. God. Yeah. Like these ones oh. here are a little rougher, but uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, have a look. Another oh, they're not so. okay. Yeah, these are fine, man. We got a little tiny bit of slug damage there, but right. that's no biggie. Should have yeah. brought bigger baskets. That's, uh, <laughs> you know. I was not anticipating finding so many oyster mushrooms, but here's some more beautiful ones again. Oh. <laughs> We're barely, barely holding on. Look at how perfect those are more white than others yeah there's tons of, i think this 30. is one that i've never eaten actually the hedgehog yeah oh they're good man yeah you take these then are they hidden them rep repandum or hidden them? hidden them hidden them hidden them repandum so, so you like them smaller like that right uh yeah some of the big ones can be just kind of dry by the time you get to them right uh this these guys here i this think are done pouring out and what i like about it is it looks like the top of a you ever seen a mushroom with teeth Cool, they right? kind of look like the chanterelles from the yeah, they do. sometimes. Oh, that is super cool. That is really neat. Yeah. Can I get that in the light there? I'll get out of here. How about there? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it didn't focus on the last one. I looked at so. And what's yeah. your preferred way to cook them? Toothy. Teeth. Uh, you know what? These ones stay firm. They're really good in like spaghetti sauces and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, these hold up good to a soup too. Right. The um, texture of them. So similar to a uh, shiitake that's like, it just doesn't break down. Yeah. All the teeth tend to fall off of them as you're cooking. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I like to clean them really well before I bag them up because otherwise the teeth get all soil in between them and they, they yeah, get Yeah, I've got dirty. a brush here. Right. Yeah. Well, this uh, actually is in really good shape. Yeah, there's a bunch of good ones here. Yeah, some yeah no, I'm only... Like... I see a little basket of hedgehogs. Oh, oh that's so cute. You know that... Got them. Oh, you got them staked out so we don't lose them. Yeah, but I mean, you found them once, you find them again. Yeah, I find them in the same spot every... Well, every year that they're out, they find them. They don't always fruit every year, but there they are. The, the um, well camouflaged, but beautiful black chanterelles or trumpets or a horn of plenty mushrooms. Room, I've got room. Oh, I've got room. I'm only going to take a enough for a little taste. Oh, there's yeah. lots here, man. You can have as many as you want. You're not production foraging here? They, no. uh, they shrink down a little. Look at those guys right there. Come on, focus, focus. Uh, Boom. Yeah. Uh, There's so many. Just look. Look at them all. Prime. Yeah. What? This is this is good picking. These are good shaped. Yep. Yeah. Look at that basket. It's gonna get fuller. Yeah. I got freezing cold maple sap if anyone wants some. Uh, oh, nice. I got this, uh, uh, this super large water. water right out of the tree. Nice. We didn't bring any water in the bush with us, so. Uh, no, Everybody's loading up now.
So we've got a little bit of a surplus. There are more more mushrooms than we're going to cook up here, obviously, in our one meal. Did I mention we're going to do catfish tacos? That's the plan. We had a little chat about it earlier, so uh, we ended up with a pretty good haul of black chanterelles. A few, a few yellow chanterelles, uh, a pile of oyster mushrooms, oysters, a whole bunch of uh, hedgehogs. They're in the other basket. Um, and then we ended up trading some wild mushrooms for some beautiful uh, hydroponically grown spinaches. Check these out. Look at these beautiful, beautiful hydro spinach dudes. So um, that's going to be part of our fish taco dinner. So in my experience the best way to preserve the uh, black chanterelles the trumpets is to dehydrate them and i do not want to dehydrate slugs so because of their funnel shape they're kind of prone to having things hiding in the middle of them so i like to uh, check the middles before i dehydrate and it's a good good opportunity to do a second sort in case uh Somebody's been picking some some uh, chanterelles that maybe don't quite meet your quality control expectations. Um, if you have a new picker or an enthusiastic picker, sometimes what happens is you can like harvest ones that really you shouldn't. So it's good when you go back to the kitchen to uh, clean them and sort them. So some of them are going into the Excalibur going to dehydrate them down and then store them up in some mason jars. King yeah. Wenzel floss. Yeah. <laughs> so that, what's that variety? This is called the Wenzel. Yeah. That's uh, over a pounder right there, my friends. Nice. Hey, you want some of that? You like that? So anyway, the, the impetus for choosing this particular, uh, there were, these two baskets were full of tomatoes that I brought from my garden for uh, this weekend's adventure. And uh, look, look at these. Little cutie banana legs. This is a pineapple tomato. Okay, I'm gonna leave some of these varieties for Jared to just taste. Mm. These are jaune flammes. This is an old French heirloom oh, variety. Yeah, I thought you maybe like, you, left I some gave you some seed of these. I don't these. think I planted those ones. I got some other ones going. These are prolific. They go like snap. Plant oh, them yeah. next year and they're really good. Nice. Uh, these are really cute. Check out these guys. These little blush tomatoes. Yeah, those are cute. Yeah, they got a really cute little blush on them. Low, re relatively low acid for a small tomato like that. Tons of little uh, various cherry tomato varieties. But anyway, long story short, the reason I I chose Good King Wenzel Sloth was because uh, I'm making a, I'm approximating some kind of salsa for our fish tacos. We're just about to make some very delicious. Come on over here, or I'll just stay there. You got you on the tripod. I'll bring it over to you, fine people of the internet fish tacos with some very delicious fresh caught catfish okay I don't know if that's in frame good you good there yeah so uh, yeah they're gonna be we're doing a Cajun style though Cajun style catfish tacos for you no not for you for us you're back yeah so uh, yeah and for that as well that didn't actually bring all these peppers for this reason I didn't even know we we're making fish tacos I didn't even know if we we're gonna catch any fish but I was pretty sure I'm just so proud of this see what happens a lot of times home gardeners you're gonna know this when you grow peppers a lot of times you get like kind of thin walls you know they don't turn out like my uh, this is a different variety that I grew this year this these ones are called trident peppers and I think you can see why it's a, it's a little bit of a triangle I think but these ones just for whatever reason didn't turn out as well as these but these are like big thick meaty peppers and uh, I'm very proud of that I just wanted to show you that there'll be some uh, jalapenos in there etc we got some Cajun spice and uh, we got some fresh spinach here also we're gonna I'm gonna do some wilted greens on the side uh, these were from Jer's friend who runs this. What is that crazy bio station? It's like a top secret hydroponic operation. Oh, it's a top secret. It's a research station. I don't know. Hydroponic. I don't know if it's secret or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's secret either, but it's a really cool uh, hydroponic operation. The entire 
uh, thing is covered, the whole greenhouse is covered in solar panels, so it's not actually kind of a greenhouse, it's just like a sun collecting structure that runs all the pumps and everything, it's really amazing. Anyway, she gave us this beautiful spinach, right, so we're going to wilt some of those on the side, a few Cajun fish tacos, and we got a whole bunch of other goodness going in, and uh, some fresh cilantro, mama. <laughs> fresh from the grocery store, <laughs> yeah. mama. You know where you know where to find this guy, but if you want to know more about tomatoes than you ever thought you didn't know about tomatoes, how many, you have 96 plants out? How many varieties? Yeah, 94. I got 94 plants in this year. And oh God, good question. Probably pushing 15 or 20 varieties. Oh yeah. At least 20. And you've been putting out some amazing Instagram content on pruning, management, like the whole work. Yeah, if you want yeah. to know a little bit about gardening, tomatoes, yeah. come on over uh, to Instagram, Stevie underscore Fonfer, and uh, we'll talk a whole bunch about it. The, the garden right now is in prime, crazy seasonal abundance. I can barely keep up with it. It's like the glut of everything. So come on over. Oh, sorry. You um, <laughs> no, I just started. You know what doesn't look good? What? There's a slug. So just to point out, like this is why you always split open your trumpets because yeah. things hide inside of them. <laughs> and in this case, it's a slug. It yeah. won't. It won't focus on the slug. You want me to hold it out here? Ah, it's a, oh, it's in focus there now. So anyway, um, you just you just take them out and then cook them, dry them, whatever. It doesn't bother me. Extra protein. Holy, this guy's like a. He's a racing slug. Look at him go. I put him on my finger and he's just like, oh, where'd he go? He's on the other side of my finger. That's impressive. Oh, he's, he's on, he's cruising. Good job, little guy. Mm -hmm. I see, I would stop that one. Cause I'm, he's. I'm gonna save him and breed him for a racing <laughs> operation. For slug racing? Yeah, release him in your garden. <laughs> the illegal slug racing trade? Yeah. <laughs> so let me just let me put those in here. Onions coming up. Right Coming to a salsa near you. Yeah, yeah. Let me just turn that over before we start going here. So, let's... Now I got big chunks of everything because this is going to approximate a salsa. Now it's not a salsa, but it is the holy trinity of Cajun cooking base ingredients, which is tomatoes, peppers, and onions. Okay? So, because we're doing we're doing a Cajun theme here with these catfish, just because they're catfish. Okay, people might wonder what that noise is. It's just the fan on the stove. Uh, transitioning to, uh, we are both fans of the hedgehog mushrooms. Huge fan. Um, the trick is, I find the teeth can get very, very dirty. They can just accumulate all kinds of stuff in there. So I try and pick them clean so that dirt doesn't fall into them in the basket so what i'm doing is brushing them off as best i can um they are a good mushroom for holding their texture i like them in like spaghetti sauces and things because they maintain a little bit of um, their density when you cook them and we're looking at a couple of tacos for a couple of guys so i'm not gonna chop up all the ones that we've got but i'm gonna do a bunch of them because we love the wild mushrooms and um, this is pretty normal that the teeth fall out while you're brushing uh, don't let that surprise you or worry you or that there would be things hiding in the teeth that you want to try and get rid of so don't don't be shy when you do that guys right here. Okay, I think that's, does that look like a good amount of hedgehogs to you? Yeah, looks, looks like a lot of you. Yeah, great. This isn't really a mushroom knife, but uh, my sister's got me this knife and I like it. Damascus, and it is a good cleaver and it's a pretty good chopper. I love that thing. What do you want, like three quarter uh, or quarter inch dice, three eighths dice? Sure. I made that up, I don't know. I'm just I'm just gonna do them like small chunks. Nice, a little bit of sea salt? A little bit of sea salt, quite a lot of sea salt in fact. Okay, check this out. We're just gonna liberally salt these little guys. That side didn't get any. Oh, you're super liberal. Okay. And we couldn't find blackened seasoning uh, in this one horse town, all right? I couldn't find it in my one horse town either, just FYI. But my one horse town is smaller, so I really am disappointed in your one horse town. 
my one horse town, we understand that we can never get any. Yeah. This is a big one horse town. You got 50,000 people. You should be able to find freaking black and seasoning, all right? We only checked one store. But we did find, uh, you know, just this sort of random cage and stuff, and that's what it's going to be. I'll blacken that stuff right up. So we're going to um, blacken up some catfish for our tacos with this cage and seasoning. And this stuff is good. Like, I use it all the time. There's nothing wrong with it. I was just really hoping to get that other black and stuff that I uh, know and love that uh, sometimes I can find. Uh, in my neck of the woods, but not often. I usually just get it down in the city. It's a little blue container. Anyway, we're going to liberally coat these guys in Cajun seasoning. Let them sit for a minute. Really soak that stuff up into the business, into the meats. Okay? That's beautiful. Come on. And uh, then I'm going to blacken those up, fry them up, and we're talking tacos. Oh, look, Looks man. Good. Yeah, just so what's just gone in, sorry, I should have waited for you, is uh, uh, those fresh, uh, let me see if I can show you, straight out of my garden, little jalapenos. Jalapenos! Okay, and uh, a bunch of fresh cilantro, which unfortunately did not come from my garden, it's just, we had to buy it at the grocery store like hobos. But uh, anyway, that's gone in, and our salsa is very close here, man. This is looking like really, really good, and I wish you could smell it through smell vision on that camera, because it smells really good. And it's almost fish time. Sauce in the back. I yep. know you have it too hot. Okay, let me just turn that back. It's gonna be on two. Okay. Can you just keep an eye on it? So the I will. Down to one and a half. Chopped up hedgehog mushrooms. Sticks woodworking, that's Adam Craig. Maybe some nice uh, cooking utensils with spalted maple. That's the nice pattern in here, which is the result of a fungi, a fungus in the wood. Uh, oh yeah, so these guys, I suddenly remembered, they need to soak up liquid so I'm going to maybe add a little splash of water in there, actually. Just a little bit. And then maybe... Oh, my kettle's empty. And then maybe a little, a little more butter. And I bet you they'd be good with a little bit of milk, even. But I'll wait for Steve get his expert opinion on that. And then at the back here, here's the matching matching utensil. It's called a spatula. So the salsa is on real low just to keep keep it warm. We just want to get the moisture out of it a bit. We don't want too much extra moisture. So looking looking good. Mushrooms. While that other business is going on, let's do up some thinly, thinly sliced lettuce. This is romaine. for our base, our taco base. How's it going, Jeff? Yeah, it's looking good, man. I love that cleaver, man. I gotta get a yeah. nice, tight little one like that. It's so, look at that, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing, dude. Okay, now we're into the fish. Might as well do the whole thing here. Steve said it was a good idea that I put a little bit of water in. Yeah, I've never tried I'm it. Gonna put in some milk, maybe. Oh, wow. I think this will be good for now. Right. There's probably olive oil already and butter or yeah. butter. One or the other. Butter and butter. Butter and butter. Yeah. It's even better. I know. It's even butter than Double. that. Double butter. 
Salsa looks good at the back. This I'm very. This is going to be so interesting together. I can't wait for that. So as soon as this burner's free, uh, this is happening. It's fish time. These are just soaking up goodness right now. That's all that is. That's just goodness soaking up right into the beds right there. All right, a little top. That's all we need there. We're going to heat up that pan. So the fish are going in next day. Eh? Yeah. Mushrooms this, done. Salsa. Done. Check. Lettuce ready. Cilantro. Peanut onions. Checked. Uh, yeah, everything's checked. Now all we're doing is just bringing this up to a nice hot temp. And here's what I'm thinking, guys. I'm gonna probably disappoint a few of you. Come on in. Come on. Let's let's have a talk here. I don't know how to break this to you, but uh, I'm not gonna blacken this catfish. It's too freaking hot in this kitchen. It's literally 40 degrees out in North Bay, Ontario, Canada. We're sweating in here, okay? So um, I'm gonna fry it. So that's good. It's gonna happen, but we're not blackening this catfish exactly because it's a lot of smoke in here. It's a lot of extra heat. It takes a little extra time. And I don't know if you can tell I'm sweating, man. I'm sweating, it's hard. And uh, we're just gonna get this thing up to temp. We're gonna cook this fish. We're gonna pull it off the bones and we're gonna eat it. So uh, for my friends down south, I, I don't wanna disappoint you. I really don't, but uh, it's just not gonna happen, all right? So. Good talk. Okay, we got that happy, happy sound. Okay, this is always good to test, guys. Have a look what happens when you, can you see that? Oil is ready, that's, that's, that's that time. So we're gonna start off here with our beautiful little bullheads. I think only three of them are gonna fit. You don't wanna overcrowd the pan, okay? Let me give you a real quick tip on cooking fish or kind of most things in a pan like this. Don't crowd them together because what's gonna happen, you're gonna end up steaming them rather than cooking them. Don't do that, okay? Cook the damn fish, don't steam the damn fish, all right? That's it, get your shit together. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't help it. Hmm. You can beep it. Yeah. Get your beep together. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get my beep together for this video. Get man, oh man. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't look nice though. Oh, they look so good. Hey, here's, I gotta, you know what? Let's catch up. My. <laughs> That's looking good, bro. Oh, golden brown. We don't need to blacken these. We got Cajun seasoning. We got crispy golden brownness. Two minutes, man. Three minutes. Okay, three to four minutes. Oh, let's just make sure. Yeah, no, they're actually, it's just a little skin stick, and I think these are done, son. Yeah, that little guy's definitely done. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right? This is the channel cat, okay? We got one channel cat last night, and this is him right here, coming into the pan where he belongs, okay? Look at that. Can I help you with this or you got it? Sure, yeah, I will, I will help you secure some of the cell. Hold on. Mushrooms and I'll do some salsa. Sounds good to me. Yeah, those mushrooms are good, dude. I think that uh, little bit of extra moisture you put in turned out to be just the ticket. No, I'm gonna use that trick. I never do that. Oh no? No. Yeah, because you usually try to cook moisture out of things, right? Hundred percent. So like counterintuitive, maybe. Except with hedgehogs, it makes perfect sense because they're always so freaking dry. Okay. They, I find they pick up like cream sauce really nice. Oh yeah, anything. Yeah, anything you add to them, they'll soak it right up. Yeah. I don't know if we could see this business in here, but that is looking very, very tasty and smelling even better. We'll get these out on the table. Oh, yeah, there you go. There it is. We'll make a little taco making station over here, maybe, or outside. We yeah, know. It's all going to be outside. Well, i got to flip these anyway. Are we talking about channel cats up in this business right here? Look at that. This, I'm getting hungrier by the minute, man. All right. So, Ready? yeah, we got plates. We're good. Yep. Okay, we got all the little bits and pieces. Yep. Tortillas. All right, we have so much stuff, it's not all fitting. I know, here. I gotta put this sideways so it actually. Okay. Oh, yeah. Have That'll a free up a little here. bit of space. Yeah, man. I'll put this up here so you can get at that. Tortilla. Okay, so actually, I gotta mm. start down. Or you go ahead, serve. It all. I'm gonna start here. Yeah, I think that's a little what bit of that, do too. Not too a little, much of it. A little bed, you know, just get some crunch in there. 
Am I right? Yeah. Look at that. So we had a good fish taco video that we put out before, right? Oh Remember yeah, that? we did fish tacos at your on camp Lake one Kippawa. time. I'm gonna start with the channel cat here, dude. I'm gonna try some of this channel cat. I'm gonna start with some salsa. Uh huh. Let us sell some mushrooms. Oh man, this looks amazing, dude. I can't even wait to get into this. I actually wasn't hungry when I went into the kitchen and no. now I'm starving. Yeah, and it's been so hot today. Uh, I it's kind of hard to be hungry a little bit. Um, it's like probably close to 40 with the Humidex, right? Yeah, it's a crazy town. That's where we went today. Crazy town. Straight to crazy town in North Bay. North Bay is a crazy town, basically, is what we're saying to you. So yeah. Salsa, my friend. Yeah. Right, let's not skimp on the salsa. All right. Okay. This is some pretty uh, juicy, thick spinach. It's really good. Right? I tried some, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put some mushrooms on there. Just a little bit. Okay, this is going to be really interesting with these mushrooms in the taco. I I've had a mushroom, mushrooms in a taco before. I feel like this is a oh, whole, no. whole new whole avenue new to explore. Yeah, it's like level up. Okay, I'm going to start with the channel cat too because I know it's boneless. I don't have to. Yeah, exactly. We don't mess have to around extract with it, it too much. Let's get one in us and then we can, you know, maybe focus a little better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is looking very nice, my friends. Very, very nice. How about wrong? Let's. I made it. Uh, I where's those red chili flakes? I'm gonna spice oh, mine up a hair. Out. I'm gonna go grab them. Okay. I'm just gonna put a little, like the jalapenos in here, I'm gonna give it some heat, but I think I'm gonna put a little more heat on this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna be here you just eating. Down, dude. Eating. These shells are not big enough for what I put on them. Are you leaving the door open for a reason to let the heat out? Um, or should I close it? No, it can close. It's close yeah. Just for your dog to travel back and forth. Oh yeah. Well, she's gonna be right underfoot while there's tacos going on. So those uh, jalapenos have got some bite. They got some kick, so mm -hmm. I maybe don't need too much of these red pepper flakes. Is what you're telling no. me? No. Okay. Noted. I'll just put a few. Mmm. Right. That looks nice. That's really good. Red pepper flakes. Really, are... really good. Let me see if I can get a little. Wild mushroom fish taco. Yeah, that is, that's level up stuff mm -hmm. going on, really. And a nice end to a hangout. Yeah, man, for got? sure. Cause I gotta hit the road after Fishing, this. foraging, teaching. Kind of got it all in. Yeah, really pretty much the whole gamut of emotions. It's, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Mm -hmm. A lot going on, man. Okay, here, here we go. That looks like a nice thumbnail for the people. Mm. The Insta people, friends on Instagram. Scroll right to the very last, all the way left, and you're gonna see the final result. I don't even know if that's gonna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay. And now it's uh, eating time. Fish taco time. Oh man. And we so good. are going to be doing more mushrooming. Yeah. And some <clears throat> princess duck hunts. In September. In your sweet boat. Yeah, I'm going to bring up the old uh, Duck Machine 2.0, mm -hmm. 2.01 since the upgrades. Mm. And um, yeah, if you're in the North Bay, Tomogamy, Sudbury, Mattawa area, come on out in September. We'll be giving the uh, introduction to foraging for wild edible mushrooms course and Shroomy Lou, um, mm -hmm. Lucy, Jeremy's ex will also be giving a workshop and it's going to be a good hang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah, going to be good for sure. Cheers. Yeah, cheers guys. See you on the next one. Oh my god. That's ridiculous, dude. Mmm. Woo! That's got some kick. Mm hmm. That's really good. Yeah. Mmm. That is good. Oh, my salsa. Can I have a salsa? You want more kick? Yeah, I just want more delicious tangy salsa. From scratch. Yeah. Mmm. So Way to that. grow some stuff, man. That's tasty. Homegrown, man. Can't beat it. Ah, 
Phew, excuse me. There we go. We'll leave off with a sneeze. <laughs> go out with a bang. Mm -hmm. Woo.